the stage is set and we want to appreciate the Holy Spirit for this morning uh, without wasting any time. I uh, would like to take up the, the armor of God according to Ephesians 6. What it says, then therefore, having heeded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having showed your feet with preparation of the gospel of peace above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all suppli prayers and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all preservance and supplication for all sins. Heavenly Father, King of glory, we've geared ourselves with your armor in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray against any backlash in the name of Jesus Christ as we embark, oh Father God, on your assignment, of oh Father God, to free nations and to bring them back to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Give us grace, oh Father God, to align, almighty God, to your pattern in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, with the dimensions that you ask of us uh, to your glory to accomplish the mission in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We're going to speak about going back to Egypt. Maybe you're wondering why going back to Egypt. In the book of, of Exodus, we see Moses going back to Egypt. He didn't go to Egypt because he wanted to, he wanted the lifestyle of Egypt, but he did it because he was doing his divine assignment. We remember at the beginning that there is a boy, a small baby that has been rescued by the river after Pharaoh had made an instruction that every child of the, of the Hebrew woman before the man must be killed. But there was a divine assignment for Moses and therefore God provides an escape of, for him, but he still comes back into the house of Pharaoh and is kept there. He's, he lives as, a, as part of the kingdom of Pharaoh. Why? It was because God allowed him to learn the systems within. Unless you know the systems, you cannot defeat the systems. And therefore, God allowed him to go in there. And God wanted him to go through the three dimensions of access. Because God's power of grace is through the encounter. First of all, it is an encounter with him. As we see it in Jeremiah 29, 3, where it says, search God wholeheartedly and experience God and mm -hmm. that condition. So unless you have gone through a different system, you will not appreciate the power of the encounter with God, like what Moses did when he fled after he killed the other man that was fighting with his brother. He wanted to take the assignment before time and he found himself running and he found himself in Jethro's house after he married one of his daughters. And then what happens, there's an, they, there comes a time while he's in the bush, there's an experience with God, there's an encounter. So the power of grace there he experiences through the encounter with God. And then what happens, the next thing which is the next dimension of access is the principle of kingdom control by knowledge and understanding. God takes him through. He makes him understand certain things and he empowers him with the rod and he gives him the confidence. And what happens thereafter, there is an alignment, covenant alignment, which is the third dimension of the access to the to the kings to the king of king of glory as we see it in abraham abraham 
was put in a way that in God, how he worked with God, that he actually is the father of blessings, the covenant alignment that he had of, with God. He find himself being a pivot of blessing of, the, of, of God, like Jacob's encounter also. We see that he has a system that God places with him, but all that happens through the covenant alignment. So in short, what we need to assess is the dimensions that God wants us to go through before we can say we are ready to go to nations. The encounter with God and the knowledge and the understanding that we're even getting on this platform and then the covenant alignment. So we see that in, in the Exodus 3, I beg your pardon, is it 3, is it 4 rather, Exodus 4, because of time, from Aten. So Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, please let me go and return to my brethren who are in Egypt and see whether they are still alive. Remember he had had an encounter with God and now he understands what he has to do. So it is about the encounter with God and having the knowledge and understanding of your assignment, of my assignment, that we go back to those places where we believe that there are people that are still in bondage because God has to make us the system that will carry on even after we are gone to bring back his people because there will always be people that will be in bondage. So it is not about a conference where people come and speak and they're gone, but it is a specific alignment that we need, especially, especially the covenant alignment. And Jethro said to Moses, go in peace. Now, the Lord said to Moses in Edom, go return to Egypt for all men who sought your life are dead. Then Moses took his wife and his son and set them on a donkey and he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand. The rod of God, that is very important. What are we carrying? We've spoken about the rod before, the kind of skill or whatever God has given you and me. But at the same time, what is more important is what is God's instruction in terms of that assignment that each one of us in this platform has. And the Lord said to Moses, when you go back to Egypt, see that you do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I've put in your hand. So there was knowledge, there was understanding. So he had something to hold on to. He had proof. So we need to pray for proof that when we go back to those people, to that Egypt for our assignment, we have something solid that shows that we have been with God. And I pray that within those 21 days, we will experience that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And then he says, but I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. So you see, we need also to pray for preparation to understand that there will be hardships in between. It is not churches before as usual. You see this, you see how Paul even after he had stopped everything that was contrary to the will of God and doing the will of God, he was still going through chains. We need to understand that, that there will be pharaohs in the nations that we, 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 we want to go to spiritually or physically. We need to pray for that preparation in the name of Jesus Christ. And God specifically says, Israel is my son. Everybody on this platform, as long as you are born again, you are a spiritual Israelite. He says, my firstborn. So I say to you, let my son go that he may serve me. But if you refuse, let him go to let him go. Indeed, I'll kill your son, your firstborn. Here God shows how critical, 
how important it is to save his people that in, the, in, in, in any resistance, God will take away the first strength of the men that resist, showing that that is to paralyze the enemy when they resist because that is his, or his, his first fruit. And it came to pass on the way at the encampment that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. This is the man that is, has a divine assignment and God wants to kill him. Let us be careful in the process while God is giving us an assignment, how we, we maintain the system, the pattern that he gives us because it was important for him to make sure as the head of the home, to make sure that his son was circumcised because that was what was required according to the law of Israel. And he did not do it. But we give God the glory because there was Zipporah. I pray that God will give each one of us a Zipporah, a burden bearer that will be there to make sure that whatever we are doing is completely in line with God. Then what does she do? She removes the, 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 the skin, the foreskin from the, the cuts it off. And what does, he, what does she do? She says to the husband, surely you are a husband of the blood, the blood to me. So he let him go. That is God. He let him go after Zipporah did that. May God let us go after he has brought that bed and bearer, that skilled person that will be there to assist us, those financial bearers that will be there for us, every helper that God wants to bring in our in alignment, let there be no resistance that we allow God to flow through us as we do our assignment in Jesus' name. The blood, we see that for me, it's this was also a covenant fulfillment because it's aligning with the covenant alignment that God had with the Israelites. We see what happened with, uh, with Abraham. Abraham, when he came out of, of Egypt, this is his father's house, where there were idols and everything, and he was aligning to God's will, he circumcised himself. The blood brings purity. I know that Jesus Christ was the final uh, access of the blood of redemption for all nations, for all creation. But all these are showing us before we get there that the blood was important. The blood is important. And I believe and I pray that we are in a new covenant with a better covenant that the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse us from all evil in the name of Jesus Christ. So we are going to pray that, oh Lord of oh Father God, that as we go out, because going out to nations is like going back to Egypt. Father, define the road that you have given me, that you have given us for this assignment. In the name of Jesus Christ, let us pray. Let us open our ma ma mics and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> the one who's provided a petty O God for us to abide by your 
Need Mama Susan. Hallelujah. In verse 21, God hardens the heart of Pharaoh. We are going to pray that God, every Pharaoh in every nation, that will harden themselves against your will. Give us the tenacity. Give us the grace to penetrate through it as you lead us. And also 23, let my son go. So we will go on to pray that God will make a way. He will speak on our behalf as, we, as he uses our mouths in those nations. And also 24, that there will be a Zipporah that will make sure that God does not kill us in the process like he wanted to do with, with Moses. And also we want to pray for, the, for an Aaron for each of us, because Moses had Aaron as the spokesman. As we, as we go back, as we go forward up to 31, we see that uh, it was him that met Moses. And it was him who went to speak to the people after Moses had briefed him. And he did the signs. He was a facilitator. He was a skilled spokesman. We need those people for us in every area of our weakness to accomplish the will of God. Our helpers, divine helpers, we require them in the name of Jesus Christ. So that whatever we do, we will do it with excellency in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Let us pray for all those four prayer points. In the name of Jesus, let us open our mouth. in the name of Jesus, we bow before you, Lord. We bow. We bow before you, Lord, and asking Lord, in the name of Father, we 
Hallelujah. Amen. Mama Susan was the system had kicked her out. She's just coming on now. Brother, um, I'm sorry, Pastor Light. Maybe you may take over, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Sister Mary and uh, Pastor Susan. May the Lord bless you abundantly. Thank you, servants of God. I greet all of you. I celebrate each of you. And I sincerely and truly thank God for what is going on on this platform was going on in our individual lives and ministries and all our areas of you know endeavor by virtue of the divine timetable or program of God that is unfolding stage by stage. We are so thankful. The past seven days on this platform have been times of transformation. I believe so for you, but for me, there have been times of transformation. I know that virtually everybody on this platform is a minister of the gospel, is a servant of God in one way or the other. And even those who might be privileged to watch this broadcast in one way or the other, you're involved in working with God, serving God, advancing God's kingdom. But I perceive very vividly that we are stepping into a new era, a new season, a new phase of the reason for our creation, the reason for our existence, the reason for which Christ died for me and for you. We are stepping into new dimension, higher dimension of that very reason. So it's such an exciting season, an exciting era, an exciting phase of our life and our ministries. So. I want to congratulate you for you to find yourself on this platform is one of the greatest favor God has shown to you in your lifetime. I know what I'm saying. And my prayer is that your eyes be open to see what God is showing and to hear what God is saying and to capture it and personalize it and get ready to run with it. That is a book God is, is, is writing in your life through this program. There is something God is indicting in your heart. God is engraving his message in the hearts of men, not just for you to read, but it's been engraved inside of you. God is engraving a message, a message. And what is this message? We are talking about the fact that God is not willing that any should perish. Many people don't believe it. Many people wish the other people should perish. God killed them. 
God destroyed them. Maybe because of history, maybe because of what somebody from that tribe or that nation did to you or did to your spouse or did to your children. So you wish they don't exist. But when we come to this platform, we understand that God is bringing us to a place where we all become as one family. You don't see yourself as, you know, a, a, an African or European or American or Chinese or Indian. You see yourself as being part of Africa, part of Europe, part of Asia, part of Australia, part of North America, part of South America. You see yourself belonging to every nation because the people, they are your brothers and your sisters. We are from one family because of the blood of Jesus Christ, which is the blood of our covenant that has brought us together into one family. Having said that, I want you to remember our focus. God is raising us as an army with which he wants to fulfill certain scriptures that is due, due for fulfillment now. There are scriptures that are due for fulfillment now. One of them is Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14. It said, it shall come to pass in the last days that the knowledge of the glory of God shall fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. God wants the knowledge of his glory, the knowledge of, of his salvation to fill the whole earth, to fill the whole earth. All right, this translation says, for as the waters fill the sea, the earth, for as the waters fill the sea, the earth will be filled with the allness of the glory of God. But the earth will be as full of the knowledge of the glory of the Lord's glory as the seas are full of water. Very interesting. The whole earth will be as full of the knowledge of the Lord's glory as the seas are full of waters. That's exactly where we are. That's where we are. But how will God fill the earth with his glory? How? Is it through the presidents of nations? Is the political parties and politicians? Is it through, you know, um, the, the, the religious bodies? the reverence and the evangelist alone. No, God is pouring out grace to everyone that believe. God is in the business of emptying himself, emptying himself into all that believe, all, all that believe in that name Jesus, so that there will be multiplication of the glory of God in all the earth, multiplication of the glory of God everywhere, in every city, in every community, in every village, in every island, among, in the, in the palaces, in the, in the government, in the schools, in the, in, in, in the low and high places. He wants his presence to be felt. He wants the knowledge of his glory. The knowledge of the glory of God is his salvation. The knowledge of the glory of God brings about his salvation. So he wants all men drawn to his knowledge, drawn to know him. And that would be the beginning of the fulfillment of his heartbeat. Because there are so much to this. When the earth is filled with the knowledge of the glory of God, it is then humanity will know really that the kingdom of God has come. The kingdom of God has come and the will of God is being done on earth as it is being done in heaven. We are yet to get there. We are yet to get there. There have been expressions or manifestations of this thing at different times when revival broke forth at different times, be it in Azusa Street or be it you know, in the days of John Knox, we read about the revival that broke forth, you know, in different parts of the world, be it in those days of Charles Finney, okay, or Edward, Edward Jonathan, in those days of John Knox of Scotland, in those days of George Whitefield, in the days of Charles Finney, you know, uh, Charles, Charles Wesley and their likes. Now we have read of such, it happened there and there 
for a time it was over. But we are believing that we are coming to a season where what happened in the days of John Knox of Scotland, what happened with people like uh, Charles Finney, what happened with people like John Gillick, what happened with people like Edward Roberts and Jonathan will begin to happen in every village, in every island, in every city, in every nation. That is called end time revival. It is end time revival. It's not localized. It is not about one denomination. It is about God revealing himself in such an, a magnificent way, in such an overwhelming way, in such an irresistible way that the entire atmosphere of every city, every community and nation is so charged up, so charged up that it becomes strange to resist the call to salvation. It becomes strange. It becomes strange to resist it. Some will because some people will choose not to answer the call of salvation because God does not force his will on people, but he will give people every opportunity and charge up the atmosphere for even the most hard-hearted to accept Christ because God is not pleased with the death of sinners. He's not pleased with the death of sinners. He wants all sinners saved from the presidents to the kings, to the prime ministers, to the senators, to the, to the, to the lawmakers, law, law, law implementers. All right. He wants all men saved, whether they are in Islam or they are in Buddhism or in Judaism or in Hinduism or in Confucianism, whatever religion they find themselves in, God wants them saved. And how can this be? That is why God brought you here to equip you, to sharpen you, and to send you forth as flaming arrows, flaming arrows into different parts of the world. So this is why we exist. This is why we are here. And you're welcome. Now, this is a new week. Last week, God took us through a number of things, and this week we are starting on a new platform, and I want to just do a little scratching on the surface because of time. I will continue in the evening, same time, 5.30 p.m. South African time, and tomorrow again, we we'll continue. Now, I want to call your attention to the, the, the double grace for global relevance for global significance, for global impact, for global you know, move of God from the place of rest. Without struggle, you see yourself flowing, just like a fish doesn't struggle to swim. You know, an, an antelope doesn't struggle to run. All right, it is natural. You can't find an antelope doing exploit in swimming. An antelope does exploit in running. Fish does exploit in swimming. They swim from the place of rest because they are wired to swim. They are wired to swim. Put a monkey into swimming competition with a fish. The monkey will look so useless and stupid because the fish will mess him up. Every man is created to function in some ways. Every woman is package for certain dimension of exploit. So this season, we need to discover the area of our expertise, the area God has wired us to make a difference, to write, to, to, to make a difference, to be a messenger to our world. There are areas that if you will agree with God to let him build you up, if you will agree with God, to let him, let him, to let him be who he wants to be in your life. If you will only give God the chance, you will realize to your shock, people that knew you in the past will be so amazed that God has such an incredible gift in you, in you. The kind of grace, the kind of gift of God in, in each one of us, including me, eyes have not yet seen it. It hasn't entered into the heart of any man. What God can make out of each one of us, if we will give him the opportunity to build us up, to pick in us, to sharpen us, to charge us, and to bring us to limelight. So within this week, we shall be going into deep things that pertain to your manifestation to the glory of God. Deep things that will bring you to limelight, 
to glorify God maximally with the rest of your life. I'm praying that everyone on this platform, it shall be your story that the rest of your life will be the best of your life. The rest of your life will be the best of your life in every field, in every aspect of you. But it's not by power, it's not by might, it is by the spirit of God, cooperating with him, choosing to let him be, choosing to let him lead you. I know that you have served God so much, you've made so much impact, you've accomplished so much, you have been celebrated everywhere. But the best of you so far is, not, is, is just a little beginning, a little beginning of what God wants to do with you in your lifetime. Having gotten to this point, I want to bring us to the subject of today, and that is the issue which is number three in the, in the discovery of, of in, in, the, in the book that was opened. Let's go back to our text. Revelation chapter 5, I'm going to take it from verse 6. Revelation chapter 5 from verse 6. Thank you, Father. He said, and I looked and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the, in the, midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns, okay, and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent in out into the world. Take note of it. Seven spirit of God sent into the earth, into all the earth. These spirits are sent out into all the earth, into all the earth. Every nation, every community, this spirit is sent into them. The seven horns, the seven eyes that search through the entire universe. The next verse, he says, then, he came and stood and took the scroll out of the hand of, the, of him that sat on the throne. That is Jesus Christ. We have dwelt on this. I'm just going through it because those who have been following understand we've done some exercises on this. Now, Jesus came to the throne and collected the scroll from the hand of the Father. Yes, he says, now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden balls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And you know, as we are praying, our prayer don't get to God as English or, or Indian language or, you know, um, or Austrian language or whatever language. Our prayer gets to God in form of incense in form of incense when we pray our prayer kindles incense in heaven and god inhales the order of the incense and that is how our prayer gets to heaven right now he said and they sang a new song saying you are worthy to take the scroll and to open the seal for you we are slain that is jesus he was slain he was slain and has redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe, tongue, and people, and nation. Now, this is a global altar. We, on this altar, are one family because we have been redeemed from our tribe, redeemed from our race, redeemed from our nationality, redeemed from our tongue, out of all those, our national barriers and all those, you know, stigma we carry as white man or black man or colored man or Indian man. No, we have been redeemed out of all those differences into one family, one family with the same blood covenant in Christ Jesus right this is the price he paid he said and have made us kings and priests to our god and we shall reign on the earth the reason for your calling is for you to reign on his behalf for you to reign for you to reign until you begin to reign, the purpose of his suffering has not been fulfilled. Until you begin to reign, the purpose why jesus died has not yet been fulfilled then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times, thousands and thousands of thousands. All right. Now, verse 12. 
saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Now these are the seven redemption heritage, the seven things that the enemy fought so much never wanted to be unveiled, never wanted humanity to access it. He never wanted humanity to access it. That was why these seven, I call them the seven keys of dominion, seven keys of dominion, seven redemption heritage. These are the seven horns that will conquer the world. The seven horns that will conquer the world. These are the seven eyes with which God will see through the ends of the earth and return them back to him. These are the seven spirits that are released into the world. They are called the spirit of power, the spirit of riches, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of strength, the spirit of honor, the spirit of glory, the spirit of blessing, the seven dimensional spirits of God, the seven dimensional spirits of God, the horns of God. These are horns that conquer territories, horns God will use to conquer nations and cities and communities and territories in this end time. We have looked into the dimension of power. We've looked into the dimension of riches and wealth. And anybody who has sat under these ministrations, you will agree with me that to say that you are redeemed and the power of God is not flowing in you, it's a mistake, it's an error. To say that you are redeemed and the riches and wealth of God has not become part of your inheritance, part of your possession, it is an error. It is an error. Now, this time we are looking into the subject of wisdom. Subject of wisdom. This is not what is not the wisdom you acquire from the university or from colleges. No, we are talking of God's class of wisdom. God's class of wisdom. Jesus paid for it with his life. He paid for it. Look at the next statement. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them. I heard saying, blessed and honor. Please give it to me in the good news on New Living Translation. That verse 13, I want to take it from there. Now, he said, blessing and honor and glory and power. Be, be. Okay, take it from here. He said, and I heard every creature in heaven, every creature in heaven, on earth, in the world below, and in the sea, all living beings in the universe. And they were singing to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb who pray, sorry, be praised and honor and glory and might forever. The, the, the New Living Translation says, and when I heard every creature, he said he heard every creature in heaven and on earth and beneath the earth and in the sea. Do you understand that? Both the fishes, both the trees, every creature, everywhere, they were singing, they were shouting, they were jubilating. Why were they singing? Why were they shouting? Why were they celebrating? They were celebrating the fact that at long last, this book has been opened, the seals have been torn, and the content has been discovered. The content has been found. The devil sealed it and never wanted it to be discovered. Finally, the lion of the tribe of Judah has overcome, has become victorious, has been able to open the book and open the seal and has found the content. And what is the content? The hell never wanted to be found. The content is power. The content is riches. The content is wisdom. Wisdom. That's where we are today. Now, let me ask us, what is wisdom? I'm sure everybody here can write possibly a volume on the subject of wisdom. But please permit me to use five sentences to discuss, to, to describe wisdom that we want to dwell on this, this time. Number one, I want to say that wisdom is ability to always know what to do and what to say in every given situation. Ability to know the accurate thing, the exact thing, what to say and what to do in every given situation, that is wisdom. All right, what is wisdom? Ability to, is a right application of knowledge. You can know something, but you don't know how to apply it. 
you know something, but you don't know how to apply it, then you don't have wisdom. Ability to know the right way to apply the knowledge you have acquired. Applying the knowledge you've acquired in real life situation, in real life situation, all right? I have heard some wise men say that there is no, you know, somebody was teaching on marriage. He said, there is actually no marriage problem. It is only wisdom problem. When a, a woman lacks wisdom on how to run her marriage, how to build her own home, she would destroy it with her own hand. So women need wisdom. Men need wisdom. When a man lacks wisdom on how to run her home, she will, he will squander what was meant to be good thing, right? That is wisdom needed for leadership, wisdom for creation of wealth, wisdom to manage wealth. Do you know some people, the reason why they will go to hell is that they were rich. Some people, the reason why they will go to hell is that they were poor. Okay, now there is wisdom to live right as a wealthy man. You need that wisdom, ability to know what is right and how to apply it. Number three, wisdom is knowing the right thing to do to get to the result you desire. Knowing the right thing to do to get to your destination, to get to the result, the result you long for, you desire. How do I achieve this? How do I get to this solution? Ability to know how to get to where you want to get to. That is wisdom. Ability to exceed others in knowledge and understanding. There is a, a man can be considered a wise man, all right, in a community. But he finds himself in another community. His wisdom is like a child's play. He's considered a fool. He's considered, you know, a dull brain in that environment because there, if he's operating at wisdom level 30, the least there is operating at level 50. So he's not considered a wise man. So that's why I said that wisdom is ability to exceed others in knowledge and understanding, all right? Now, what the last one I wanna talk about is wisdom as you know, building according to the irrefutable and unfailing word of God, building your life, building your business, building your ministry, building your family, according to the irrefutable and irrevocable word of God. Remember Jesus says something, that a wise man is that man who built his house upon the rock, upon the rock. Said so the flood came, the storm came, the wind came, and the house remained solid. But a foolish man is one who built his house on the sun, on pleasure, on culture, on tradition, on just mere education or wealth. That's the trust, that's the basis on beauty, on physical side. That is the strength and the basis and the foundation of what you are building. It will just collapse just as the wind blows, it will crash. But when you build according to the word of God, then you are a wise man. So a wise man, a wise woman is somebody that is building according to the word of God. That is wisdom. All right. Now, having said that briefly, because we're going to have segments of this discussion, this is where I can stop on that for now. Now, I want to show us a few things in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 8, a popular scripture on the subject of grace. Now, the Bible says, for by grace, for by grace, you have been saved through faith, that and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, all right? I want to use this scripture together with Titus chapter two, verse 11 to begin a, to lay a little bit of foundation here. He says, for the grace of God has that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. Now the former scripture tells us we are all saved by grace. By grace we are saved through faith. By grace, by grace we are saved through faith. All right. And he says that this grace that bringeth salvation has appeared. The good news says for God has revealed his grace for the salvation of all people. He said, for the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people, bringing salvation to all people, all people with no exemption, with no exemption, all people, 
all right? God has already brought salvation to all people. God has brought salvation to all people. But like I said earlier, the enemy has vowed not to let them see the free salvation, the free salvation that has been given unto them because of what Christ did. He has blinded their eyes that they will not see, they will not hear, they will not understand. You will talk to them, they will, it enters into this one ear and goes out through the other ear. They can't get it because the devil has blindfolded them not to see, not to know, not to understand what has been done for them on the cross of Calvary. Now, the point I want to make is this. I believe everyone here is saved. I believe everyone here is saved. If you are not yet saved, maybe somebody invited you. Welcome. You are not in the wrong place. You are in the right place. That's the most place, the best place for you to be. All you need is at the end of this meeting, as we begin to pray, praying for nations, first of all, take time to pray. Lord, please let me have this salvation that this Jesus Christ paid for and gave to all nations, gave to everybody. I want to receive my own portion of this salvation. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. Let my sin be washed and let this new life be given to me. I want to be a partake of eternal life because I want to spend eternity with Christ and all the saints. All right, now I want you to take hold of this. And this, I want you to go and think about it throughout today. The Lord said to me this morning as I was reflecting, he says, your salvation, your salvation is not your, your, your work. You, 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 you had right put it. He said to me that salvation is a gift. And you access that gift. It's a gracious gift of God, which is accessed through faith. And that your salvation is only, that's what he said to me. Say, your salvation is like a gold mine. It's like a treasure box. You have to dig into it. You have to open it and possess the content. The content of salvation by grace, inside of it, there is power, there is wealth, there is wisdom, there is strength, there is honor, there is glory, there is blessing. Now, the Lord was saying, that for you to say that I have found the grace of God that gives, that brought me to salvation. You have found like a good mind. You have found a treasure box, but you can carry a treasure box and die of sickness, die of sickness, die of poverty, die of hunger, die of, 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 of the oppression of the enemy. You carry a treasure box, but you are perishing because you've not been able to open the treasure box to know the content. Somebody can be, you know, can be begging on a gold mine. You can give somebody a gold mine and he doesn't understand the content and he dies begging while dwelling, while inheriting a gold mine. Salvation, which came to you by grace, contains for you power, wealth, riches. It contains wisdom. And this wisdom we are talking about is wisdom in God's own class. God's class of wisdom. This is our focus today. Accessing God's class of wisdom. Accessing God's class of wisdom. Jesus was ministering somewhere and the people ask themselves, what manner of wisdom is this? What manner of wisdom is this? Is this not the son of Joseph? From where did he learn this? Where did he get this? This is beyond us. We've never seen a man talk like this before. They sent some people to go and arrest him. And when the people got there and they couldn't arrest him, the atmosphere was charged. So they were compelled to stop and listen mistake the mistake they made was to listen when they started to listen for a minute for two minutes for three minutes he, they were so captured and they ran back and the people asked them where is he they said sir we couldn't catch him why he said never have we heard never have we heard a man speak like that 
have you also been deceived? Say, you go and catch him yourself. Go and catch him. The wisdom that was flowing out of him is so magnetic. The wisdom that was coming out of his lips were irresistible, so overwhelming, so penetrating that it can break rocks. It can break rocks. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. Now we're asking this very week, Lord, this day and tomorrow, Lord, baptize me with this dimension of wisdom because we need it. We need it. You need it. You need it to be relevant globally. And when I look at that scripture we have been looking at in the book of Mark chapter 1 verse 37, it gives me, it causes me to shiver. It makes me to pray as if I have never prayed before. That a man went to pray and as he was praying, his disciples were searching for him everywhere. When they found him, they said, Master, where have you been? We have been looking for you. He said, when they found him, they said to him, everyone is looking for you. Good news said, and when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. New Living Translation said, when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. Everyone is looking for you. Everyone, everyone is looking for you. Everyone is looking for you. That means every single human being is looking for you because they realized that whatever they needed was inside of you. You carry what they needed. You carry the solution to their family problem. You carry the solution to their health problem. You carry the solution to their, their financial problem. You carry the solution to every problem they have in their nation, in their nation, in their community, in their government. Every politician, every millionaire, importers, manufacturers, lecturers, teachers, nurses, everybody is looking for you. The rich, the educated, the illiterate, the, those who are not privileged to go to school. They are not illiterate, but they were just not privileged to go to school. Everybody was looking for you. The healthy, the sick, everyone, everyone. Now, that is where God wanted to get to. Where your re relevance became, becomes irresistible. It's like Jesus got to a point where he became irreplaceable, 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 irreplaceable. God wants you to get to a point where you become like an indispensable person, indispensable in your workplace, in your family, in your ministry. You become irreplaceable, indispensable. Everybody needs you like they need air. Now, it cannot be done by your own effort. It is what the, what, what the Spirit of God does in you. As you begin to follow him step by step, step by step, and learn of him, learn of him, take his yoke upon you, learn of him, following his steps, following his steps, looking unto him. What you keep looking at, you will look like. What you keep looking at, you will look like it. You will look like it. If you stay in a fridge for too long, whether you like it or not, your temperature will come to the temperature of that refrigerator. If you go to the oven, whether you realize it or not, your temperature will warm up. That's how it is. The closer you are to Christ, the more you become like him. The Bible said when they saw the wisdom, when they heard the wisdom, the boldness, the wisdom and boldness in the apostles, they say, ah, these men have been with Jesus. These men have been with Jesus. The scripture tells us that when you walk with the wise, you will become wise. When a companion of fools shall be destroyed. When you walk with the wise, you become wise. When you walk with the fools, you become foolish and you end up being destroyed. So who is the wise man we want to walk with this season? Jesus Christ, following in the steps of Jesus, makes you enter his class of wisdom. Remember the Bible says, Jesus Christ is the wisdom and the power of God. Jesus Christ is who? The wisdom and the power of God. When you walk with him, when you eat with him, when you dwell with him, when you, you re, re, brainstorm with him, he will impact into you. It becomes natural for you to be an extension of the one 
whom you have donated yourself to. He will use you as an extension, a continuum of his life, of his wisdom, that the world might be saved through you. What have I just said? The, the wisdom of God is the horn with which God will conquer the world in this end time. The wisdom of God is the key with which doors will be opened for you to become a global voice, a global figure that God will use to cause nations to hear his voice, to hear his voice. There are many evangelists out there, but God is raising evangelists and apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers, intercessors, music stars. God is raising, you know, administrators who will walk in the class of God's wisdom to get the nations to bow their knees to Jesus, who is the light of the world, who is the God giving salvation to the entire world. Because of time, I'm going to pause so we begin to pray. But before we pray, can you please listen to the book of Isaiah chapter 55, Isaiah 55 from verse 3 to verse 6, Isaiah 55 from verse 3 to verse 6. I'm going to read this portion. It has, God has pregnanted me with this portion since, since last December. I have been pregnant with this scripture. He said, incline your ears and come to me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The sure mercies of David. Verse 4. Thank you, Lord. He said, indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people. I have given him. Who is that person? Can you please see yourself as the person being talked about here? He said, come to me with your ears open. The next verse, please. The projector, go to the next verse. He said, indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. God is raising you as a leader, as a commander to nations. He says, see how I use him to display my power, oh, wonderful, among the peoples. I have made him leader among nations, leader among nations. This platform is raised to raise leaders, to equip leaders, to sharpen leaders, leader that will champion the redemption move of God, leader that will champion revivals across the nations, among the youths, among the women, among single parents, among men, among the rich, among the poor, among the educated, among the politicians, among leaders of nations, among the church people, among all categories of people. The next verse, he says, surely you shall call a nation, oh my goodness, you, you do not know, and nations who do not know you shall run to you, nations who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. He says, you also will command nations you do not know, and peoples unknown to you will come running to obey. They will come running, they will come running because I, the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, have made you glorious, have made you glorious. My dear brothers and sisters, servants of God, if you can't believe any scripture, believe this. And please, this is not written for Pastor Light. It is written for you. If you are hearing me, consider yourself the person for whom that scripture was written. Having said that, I want to say to you, for this scripture to be fulfilled, for this scripture to be fulfilled, you need to enter into a realm of wisdom, a realm of power, a realm of wisdom, a realm of power, a realm of wealth and riches in righteousness. He says in verse 6, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. This is how it goes. How do you step into this dimension of wisdom? How do you step into this dimension of power, into this dimension of greatness, of riches and wealth? By seeking the Lord, by seeking the Lord. And this is what we are doing now, seeking the Lord. Verse 6 of it, he says, seek the Lord, why he may be found. Good news says, how do we put it? Say, turn to the Lord and pray to him now that he is near. Wonderful, wonderful. It says, seek the Lord while you can find him. Servants of God, this is the right time to call upon him. He said, call upon him now while he is near. This is January 2022. 
it is time the wise are seeking God. The wise are seeking God. He said, turn to the Lord, turn to the Lord and pray to him now that he is near, now that he is near. So this time of fasting, those of you who joined us, maybe today's your first coming, first time of joining us, you were on a 21 days fast. Today is day number, is it day number eight? I think so, yeah, today's day number eight. If you haven't been fasting before, please join us in the fast. Join us in the fast. It will help you a lot. Join us in the fast and be part of what God is doing. You can choose whether you want to fast 24 hours or you want to fast six to six or you want to fast six to three or you want to fast through the evening, through the night, okay? However, connect to this flow and seek the Lord passionately, passionately, not a religious fast, not a religious fast. Seek the Lord passionately with every breath in you. Pray whether you are driving, whether you are cooking, whether you are sweeping, whether you're in the bathroom, anywhere you are. Pray as if there is no tomorrow. What did I say? Pray as if there's no tomorrow. As you keep praying, seeking the Lord, what are we asking for? Lord, we have one major prayer point. Lord, grant us double grace for global impact, double grace for global relevance in our calling, in our business, in our career, in our mission on earth, you have a special mission. There is something God sent you into this world for. There is a destiny God has set for you. That is the purpose of God for your life. And the enemy has been blocking you, limiting you, resisting you, just keeping you at the periphery. But from this 2022, you are breaking all the protocols, breaking all the limitation, breaking all the barrier to enter inside of the major thing. Why God trained you, why God brought you here. You are stepping into the full dimension of it. And that is why we are fasting because you have been reduced to a low estate where you are meant to be at the topmost top. And we are revolting against the status quo and say, no, I can't remain at this level. I refuse to stay at this level. I am breaking free. I'm breaking free. I'm breaking free. Every barricade, be it ancestral, be it tribal, or by reason of the environment, we I find myself by reason of my failures of the past. My failures of the past have limited me. I'm breaking the limits of my failures and advancing into the realm I was created to be. Shall we begin to pray? Unmeet yourself. Unmeet oh. yourself. Let's Just begin to pray, everybody. In, in the, the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus, mighty God. Le <laughs> Sacrata <laughs> <laughs> 
The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Say so to know knowledge, you must first have reverence for the Lord. Say so stupid people have no respect for wisdom and they refuse to learn. And that is Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. When somebody begins to walk in the fear of God, the person is stepping into a realm of wisdom. The entry door into wisdom is the fear of God. The entry door into the fear, into, into the into wisdom of God is what? The fear of God. I want you to ask God, Lord, help me. Help me to fear you, to walk in you. Jesus said, a wise man built his life according to the, the word of God, but a foolish man despises the word of God. They despise instruction. They consider it religion. These people are too, too spiritual. They are just you know, fanatical about this, they are Jesus. But that is it. What did you remember what Jesus said to Martha? He said, come on, Martha, Martha. You are cumbered about many things. You are worried about many things. You are so busy with every other thing. He said, only one thing is important and that Mary has found and no one will take it away from her. What did Mary find? Mary found wisdom. Mary found the word of God. Mary found Christ the word of God and gave, gave full attention to him, full attention to him. Sir, ma, with due respect to where you are in the Lord and in the society, you need to draw closer to Jesus. He is the, the fountainhead of wisdom. Do you remember what Paul said in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He said, Jesus, Christ Jesus, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Jesus Christ is who? The power of God and the wisdom of God. We saw in John, he was the embodiment of grace. He was the embodiment of grace and truth. The word of God made flesh and was made manifest. And we saw in him grace and truth and what did we say grace represents grace contains power grace contains wisdom great content grace contains wealth and riches and honor and all of that which we shall be opening as we go so what is my prayer lord help me to find jesus oh my god pastor don't you know we are pastors we have found jesus yes sir but do you remember that John, the most beloved, the man that was closest among all the 12 disciples, the closest to him was John. But when John was, when John saw Christ in a revelational form, in a revelational form, he fell down like a dead man. John, John fell down like a dead man. Why? Because he saw Christ in his glory. Jesus, reveal yourself to me. You are the wisdom of God. Reveal yourself to me. I need you to empty yourself into me. Jesus, I want to know you. The more you know him as wisdom, as wisdom, the more wise you become. You will daze the world. I say you that is listening to me. God wants to use you to daze the world, to cause the, the wise to see that they, they are foolish. He uses the foolish things to humble the wise. 
You are that person. God wants to use you to humble the wise. So, Lord, I'm asking you for a full download of your wisdom, your class of wisdom, your class of wisdom. That's all I'm asking for. Shall we pray? Father, Proverbs chapter 4, Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 6 to 7. He said, do not forsake her. Oh, he's talking about wisdom. He said, do not forsake her and she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, get wisdom, and in all your getting, get understanding. Kai, he said, do not abandon wisdom. She will protect you. Love wisdom, love her, and she will keep you safe. We need safety, safety from diseases, safety from assassins, safety from the, from the agents of Satan, witches and wizards. Safety. He said, love wisdom. She will protect you. Don't neglect wisdom. He said, don't turn your back on wisdom. For she, for she is thy life. She will shield you. She will be a defense. She will deliver you. He said, for she will protect you, love her, and she will guard you. She will guard you. She will be a fence around you. She will be a fence and a shield around you. He said, wisdom is the principal thing, verse 7. Therefore, get wisdom, get wisdom. Whatever you get, please get wisdom, get wisdom. And in all your getting, get understanding. So getting wisdom is the, is, is, is the wisest thing you can do. Wow, I love that. That New Living Translation. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. And whatever else you do, develop good judgment. Good judgment. All right? He said, get wisdom. Get wisdom. The most important thing. Getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do. So my dear brothers and sisters, servants of God, leaders of God's people. The scripture tells us that it's a new day, it's a new season. In whatever you want to get this time around, get wisdom. So we're going to pray. Lord, this day, we're asking you for one thing, double grace for global impact. And today's focus is on the subject of wisdom. We need wisdom to excel. You know, some people get to board, board meetings. 
do you know some in some industries or companies or some organization it's not really the chairman that leads the chairman may not be the leader the chairmanship is about is an appointment somebody's appointed to be the chairman or maybe the person founded the organization but there could be a younger person who has the wisdom to lead that organization now, I want you to ask God, Lord, you know what you do, your workplace, where you lead, where you minister, and beginning from your home. Lord, give me this kind of wisdom. The Bible says it is the most important thing I need now. What you need, I tell people, what you need first, first is not money. What you need first in life is not money. What you need is what? Wisdom. Was it not wisdom that made Solomon? I'm going to go into that. I will go into that, but not today. Wisdom brought Solomon to a place of wealth that his wealth became a mystery, something that could not be explained. What brought it? Power? No. Education? No. Wisdom? How did he get it? A gift. That is a wisdom that is a gift. That is a wisdom that is a gift. We shall go into all of that. Lord, I am asking you, this is our last prayer for the day. And after that, I'm going to pray and then Pastor Susan will bless the communion. Lord, I receive this wisdom that is a gift. The Bible says it is the most important thing I need. And in all my getting, I must get right judgment, ability to judge correctly, to discern correctly, to understand things in God's own dimension, in, from God's own point of view, not to judge from your point of view, Lord, wisdom to see from God's point of view, to understand and to know things in the way God knows it shall we pray hallelujah thank you my god i thank you my god i thank you my god for the wisdom for, for the, the grace, wisdom for the wisdom for the wisdom that you have given unto us us to receive your hands of wisdom your hands of wisdom your hands of wisdom we need this wisdom we need this wisdom we need this wisdom we need this wisdom lord lord wisdom to do Wisdom is Wisdom Wisdom, 
Agree with me that we don't have enough time to pray, do justice to this prayer. So we have come, this platform is like going to a refinery. Okay, you go there with a large tank to collect fuel, petrol, and then you go to distribution centers to distribute it. You come here to collect fire, collect fresh oil, as long as your container is new, because the new oil, the fresh oil must be in a new container. The new wine must be in a new wine skin. You collect, you go and discharge. That is what we're here for. Please don't stop this prayer. Pray through the day, calling for wisdom. That's what made Solomon the greatest of men in his days. But thank God Jesus came and said, greater than Solomon is here. Greater than Solomon is here. And Jesus, you are the, new, the ambassador of Jesus. So whatever was in Solomon is a joke, is a joke compared to what God has given to the redeemed New Testament believer. What a mystery. Father, I thank you this morning for every man, for every woman that came to this meeting today. Father, I'm asking you, oh God, I'm asking you, help us to discover that what we need to rule and to reign over the nations, to rule and to reign over the nations, which is your plan for calling us, for redeeming us. We need wisdom. We need wisdom. It is the principal thing. Hi. You say we need wisdom. It is the principal thing. The most important thing we need to get in this life. The most important thing to go for, to purchase, to purchase, to purchase, to buy, to possess. It's wisdom. We are asking you, oh God, baptize us with this spirit. That is the spirit of wisdom. We want this spirit. It is the horn with which we shall conquer the nations. It is the eyes with which we shall see into the nations. It is the key with which we shall unlock nations. We receive this baptism of the wisdom of God, of the God class of wisdom, the God class of wisdom. That's all we are asking for. God, have your way. For this is what we need to have a peaceful home. This is what we need to have peaceful marriage. This is what we need to have prosperous business. This is what we need to excel in ministry, in our gifting, in our calling, in our assignment, in our assignment, in our industry. This is what we need to teach principalities and powers the many-sided wisdom and skill of God. Glorify your name. It's a new day. It's a new beginning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The era of foolishness is over forever. The era of mediocre, mediocrity is over forever. The era of average living, average mentality is over forever. We are stepping up into the realm of God's dimension of wisdom. Be glorified forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Please, if there is somebody here who has something that you need an attention for because of time, you can reach out to me after this meeting or you stay back because of time we want to release people. There is something that is a huge mountain before you and you want to join him with me to address it. You can reach me after now. God bless you. Pastor Susan, please bless the communion for us. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Uh, we go back to Exodus Amen. 4, verse 8. So Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, Please, let me go and return to my brethren who are in Egypt and see whether they are still alive. We see wisdom mm. here, the way he approached his father-in-law. He does not say, look, I'm a deliverer. I have to go back 
and deliver my people. Mm. He speaks with wisdom. And therefore, so true. as we partake, we want to impart of the grace of wisdom. Hallelujah. In Proverbs 4, just before the 7, it says, 5, get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget, but turn away from the words of my mouth. That's exactly what Moses did. And we pray that God will also help us. It says, do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Even when we meet the hard pharaohs, wisdom will preserve us in these nations that God is sending us to in the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, as we partake of the bread of life, Mm. we are partaking of your eternal life. We are partaking of the blood that cleanses all sons. And therefore we decree and declare that with the knowledge that you have given us, with the encounter that we have had with you, with the covenant alignment that we make with you through the blood of Jesus Christ. We are therefore empowered for the work ahead. In Jesus' mighty name, let us partake. Thank you, Pastor Light. Thank you, sir. Kosa <laughs> Obadia ro nele ra uzo nele lia usana ma meru ro solo ba ya shaka ra ba 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 kete riko soto koshe te re ba 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 ro ra soto ro ba 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 le ne riki zete ke shi te re ba ba ro na e la li la solo no lo solo malala anga na mana uze le le ma ro na biro do so na ro baru ga ko ko so to ro ba e lo la lo ste le banu le ke si la wo sa ba 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 la ga ma ste le lo Sorry, I was uh, logged out. Um, Tarabala Shatarababa. Thank you, Pastor Light. Koma Shatarababa. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Sudan. The Lord bless you. Thank you, everybody. It's been a wonderful morning and, or I mean, evening over there and afternoon over there as well. So I want to congratulate you again. Please join us again in the evening. It's going to be amazing. Now, please, if you are here for the first time, give us your name and your, your, your phone number. Put it on the chat box before you go. We need it so we can be communicating with you. It's a family and God is doing great things to the glory of his name for which Christ is here. Those who have been inviting people, may God bless you and bless you and bless you. Wonderful day. Thank you, Father. I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful for this season of wisdom, baptism of wisdom for great exploit to your praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Like I mentioned, If there is anything that is is so important you want us to agree to address, let me know so that we can deal with it. Thank you, Father. Surely 
goodness, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and pray in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest in our mind with us now and ever. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Light. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Light. Thank you, Pastor Light. Thank you, Pastor Light. Thank you, Pastor Light. Thank you, Pastor Light.